Hey YouTube, welcome back to Days One Hobbies. Let's check out some diecast. Here we have the uh, Schwinn Factory BMX Team Van Chevy G20. Really cool looking van. I mean, this thing is it's large. It's pretty big. And that's by Johnny Lightning. This is one of my first times really getting uh, Johnny Lightning and paying t too much attention to him because I went to correct the wheels and realized they're a, what, a three piece design. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, you got the little hubcap, that's a piece, tires a piece, there's a little inner center piece, and you got the axle. And I don't know what is up with my camera. Then we have the 1977 Dodge van. Johnny Lightning as well. This time it's the Mongoose. They used to have a Mongoose. And the Pegs. And the Gyro. Rode that thing all over town. Didn't even care about a car. Those were the days. It's got a bit of a rolling issue. It kind of weevil wobbles. That's all right. A couple of little factoids. Skip has started BMX products incorporated out of his home in 1974 with his self-engineered product design and Moto Mag wheels. A couple years later, he branded and trademarked his BMX bike designs as Mongoose, named after his friend and fellow racer, Tom the Mongoose McGowan. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool little factoid. <clears throat> 1976 Ford Econoline from Johnny Lightning Boogie Vans. This thing's really cool. Just good old hippie vibes. Kind of looks like he's wearing a bandana. Pretty cool, really cool little van. Oh, <clears throat> freak fact. Just like other car enthusiasts, conversion van clubs across the U.S. meet regularly to, to show their latest creations. In 1976 alone, there were 167,830 units built of the Ford E-Series. That's pretty wild. And a colored metallic cyan and orange. Pretty cool stuff. Really neat little find. And then... <clears throat> got my first Tarmac. This thing turned out to be... A bit smaller than I expected. Go ahead and pop it out. <clears throat> that 
This thing is tiny. Compared to the other cars. This thing is tiny. This is pretty, really cool. Got the whole Brie on it. I know it's a racing team. I'm not that much into it. I just thought it was a really cool little Datsun and thought it was a pretty fair price. Rolls real nice. Real smooth. Not bad. Pretty cool little thing from the first tarmac. And then here, this is one of my favorites to find. Just found this on Father's Day. And this is the Fast and Furious Mercedes. What is it? I can't remember off the top of my 500 SEL. That's what it is. And this was supposed to be the uh, Drift King's dad's car. Where they happened to meet up at the end for the race. I didn't get any of the other cars from that set. Which is not really that big of a deal. I already have a custom Integra. And it's just another Porsche. Don't really care for the Land Rover Defender. Now, Land Cruiser, that would have been pretty cool to have. But literally, it was just a Mercedes and the Integra left over. I didn't need another Integra. I got two of them. I cut it. All right, work out. That was pretty cool. Save it. Do something with it later. Next, we got the 2005 Toyota Land Cruiser Prada. I mean, it just looks like a Highlander to me. I'm no expert. Still a really neat casting. We've got 2018 Toyota Land Cruiser. Oh, Forerunner, not Land Cruiser. Got stuck. That's really neat. Just nice detail, no crazy livery or nickels. Nice little plate there. Just a neat little truck. I didn't collect the whole set. I'm not one to really collect sets. There's another one I was really excited to see find. That's the Toyota GR Corolla from the Hot Wheels Slide Street. Again, this is one of those ordeals where you only find one or two out of the box of ten. So if someone snatched a whole set and got a an extra of a couple. Not sure if they would have found the chase or not of this. This one is the chase. Fine. Number zero in black. But I was not that lucky. I'm not going to be searching eBay for it either. I won't pay those markup prices. There's just no sense in it at all. Then we have Auto World's Cat Eye Chevy. My dad's got one of these. He's got it in white. So, 
I had to get him one. I got him the green one, and then I got this one a red. It's really good in red. Big old 4x4 tires. Funny thing is, I had a set of these 17s on my 88 Mitsubishi Mighty Max, which is a little Dodge V50. It's a neat little mini truck. And a couple little facts this is the first release of our 2003 Chevy Silverado casting. The 2003 Model year was an overall minor styling refresh of the previous year, giving the front end a much more aggressive look. And for the longest time, I really didn't care for these trucks. But, alright, it does have a bit of aggressive look with the whole cat eye theme, as they call it. Then we have the 2023 Challenger Red Eye Hellcat. Black Ghost Edition. I'm not real big on the story about the Black Ghost, but I guess it was something about an undercover cop going and doing late night street races or something. <clears throat> but on here, the little factoid tells us the last call black ghost edition pays homage to the legendary 1970 challenger rt owned by detroit police officer godfrey qualls the original 1970 black ghost was painted black with a gator skin vinyl roof its lore became almost mythical as it appeared at night to dominate the street races before again vanishing into the night color is pitch black And here you can see that gator skin. And as you can see, yeah, they got a hemi. It sure has a hemi. Sure does. And then there was just something I did with a little foam rock I had in the Jeep. That was a neat little diorama stand piece or whatever. It's a neat little desk piece. Got it from RPP Hobby. It's an RC online RC store and brick and mortar store. But never been there. Too far away. And then let's go. Got Hot Wheels 2017 Audi RS6. This is a pretty cool car. Really like the color. Like the, the car itself. I really dig wagons and vans. And I'm going to wind up doing a wheel swap on this one. So let's go ahead and pop this one out. So that's a really cool little car. Just that slate gray. Something about it. Really cool. Cool, cool little car. And we got Neon Speeders set. Not the whole set, but some of them. Porsche 911 GT3 Cup. Got that for Mrs. Days. She's really starting to get more into pink and find her girly side. 19 something 20 2000 something I don't know BMW M3 GT2 really neat little car I haven't tested any of these to see if they actually glow underneath the black light I know some of them don't some of them do then we have 2016 Mercedes AMG GT3 that's just wild with the pink and the blue. That, that's just, it really, really, really pops. I think it's super cool. Plus, I really like Mercedes cars. Don't necessarily care for how much they are to maintain. 
but yeah, that's that's what's going to keep me from ever owning a real nice Mercedes or an old one at that. And then we got the 2015 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. Just another awesome looking heavy car. I actually detailed the tail lights on it. That really pops. I like that. Super cool. It's almost like I had a neon reaction or something. I don't know what. Super cool. And the last of the neon speeders that I have is the 2016 Cadillac ATS VR. I just haven't seen too many of the Cadillac ATS Vs or too many of the Cadillac V cars. So I had to pick it up. The only ones I didn't get out of the set was the 4 GT, which I'm not too big on those. It's just to me, it's just kind of a car. I know it's legendary, but eh. You got the Z06. Again, just not big on Corvettes. And the McLaren, that was pretty cool. But, uh, again, still, just not really my kind of car. So, it, it, they got left behind. I didn't need, I'm not one that has to collect a whole set. Even if it's there and in front of me. And here we have the uh, 97 Mercedes CLK from the Team Transport set that came with the Fleet Street. One of my favorite haulers, even though there's the unlicensed hauler. But this one, there's no decals on it, no branding, absolutely nothing. Black and some details. It's super cool. And they let did just a nice plain Jane car on this one too. I think they look so much better when they don't have all that racing liveries on them. Really cool. Set that up there. And then we have the M2 model set, the 1972 Dodge truck. I chose to go with these five slots instead of the, the fins for these. This one. Really cool looking little truck. And it's got the different grill. Then some of the other ones that they've released for the different model years. I really enjoy this color. I thought this was really cool. Nice slam version. Let me just set that over there for now. Out of the way. And then we have the 1978 version model kit. And we got more of your standard height. right height to it again real nice little pickup and it's got a Hemi as well super cool again Dodge gotta have a Hemi there's those <coughs> And sticking with the M2 models, I got the 73 Super Cheyenne 10 Foos series. Chip Foos. He's a really cool designer. And I can't remember what show it was, but they would go and pick up, it's kind of like 
pit my ride, but it was better. They didn't put add a bunch of wacky stuff to it. They just restored it, renewed it, and gave it back to whoever the lucky person was that got their stuff rebuilt. It's really cool. Get that up there. They'll stay. <clears throat> then we're gonna. This is one that I was really super, super, super excited to find. Which I don't know. Let's see that. Let's see that. I found a chase. I sure found a chase. You got the green chrome sprite chase. I found a chase. No, but for real, I found it. I didn't buy this off eBay or anything like that. I don't even know why I'd pay those absurd prices. I seen some guy listing some O'Reilly's OBS or square body dualies. Wanting forty dollars a piece, like, sorry, I mean this is just my opinion, and there, the people want to say, oh, it's because you need a better job. No, forty dollars for an eight to ten dollar car is absurd and stupid, especially when it's not even a chase. And those that are willing to pay for it are the problem as well as to why. Collecting is ridiculous. It just simply is. Because you have hobby dealers that wind up getting hobby exclusive type cars. So they'll automatically see the chase. And you think they're going to sell the chase for a regular retail price or give you the chance to pick it off the shelf for retail price? Nope. They're going to pick it out. But thankfully when it comes to the unacquitted Walmart employee... Sometimes you get lucky. But then, I also know there's an employee there that probably collects because there's generally only like one thing out of the case that is left. And it's kind of ridiculous. But it is what it is. Got to beat him to it. I'm just not doing it. I did manage to find one of these boulevards. The 2018 Toyota 4Runner. I didn't get this the first time around it came out. I don't even think I was really gotten back into it by the time this one came out. But I, some people are uh, calling these the Boulevard All-Stars. All-Stars. The All-Stars. Still a supercar. Super cool looking car. Only difference is uh, it's got this golden type logo up top and it's not numbered. Other than that, it appears to be the same exact thing, just recycled. <coughs> Which Hot Wheels is definitely well known for recycling and reusing. Then we got the Petty Garage what, 2015 Ford Mustang GT. Auto World. This one I'm not going to open up. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. I might wind up taking it back. We'll see what happens. But some little factoids there were 100 Stage 1 Mustangs made for Petty's Garage in 2015. They were fitted with a Ford Racing Roush, Roush supercharger for its 627 horsepower 5.0 liter V8 engine Magnaflow exhaust. A new cold air intake plus other mods. The stage two cars were limited to 43 units, adding wheel wood brakes, different wheels, and custom two tone paint job. So, even the fact that they did 43, which I'm pretty sure that was Petty's race number, that's pretty cool. That's a really cool little car. I'm just, I'm not too big on. Too many Mustangs. So, uh, this one, it, it just may go back. 
Next, I got the uh, M2 Coke Chevy G10. Again, no chase. This one I'm not going to open up either. I know it's not much of anything. It's probably definitely not going to have any type of resale value. So I don't care about that part. It's just the fact that I have no reason to open it. So I'll just leave it sealed. It's pretty cool to look at. Uh, yeah. There's another neat one from Matchbox that recently found. Just having to walk into Dollar General and walked in the back to the toy section. Look up and it was just like, oh, almost like I had a halo around it. Oh, they grabbed it. I know they did a premium style of this on Matchbox Collectors. Something like that, not too long ago. But this is not the same. It has plastic wheels. The headlight color or painting is not the same as it is on the other. <clears throat> but it's still really cool. That blue color though. That I don't know how to describe it matte powder metallic blue uh, super cool and then I got this 57 heaven by Johnny Lightning for the wife she's been really digging the 57 Belairs and I seen this and the fact that it says 57 heaven I was just like yup gotta get it for her. and the uh, freak facts on this one is the 1957 Bel Air has some of the most famous fins in history of the automobiles uh, yes absolutely those things are just beautiful between it and some of the Cadillacs oh, just beautiful the two-door wagon version of the 57 Bel Air was called the what nomad uh, I'm pretty sure if you guys ever watched Home Improvement with Tim Allen, yeah, you've seen him drop a, crank, a beam on that thing. And, uh, yeah, I can only imagine if you actually had a car like that. That much effort, time, and blood, sweat, and tears, and just, whoops! That would uh, definitely devastate someone. But that was just a cool little thing from the old TV shows but uh, then we got Matchbox's 2018 Bentley uh, yeah I'm not even going to try to say that I don't know someone can uh, correct me on how to pronunciate it but uh, Bentega Bentega yeah I don't know it's a little odd for me I just got it because it was a Bentley It's cool to see something different in Matchbox's lineup. We're really stepping it up. Then we got the two, 2021 Cadillac CTSV in red. Just beautiful in red. Oh, there goes the uh, turntable. That's all right. You can go. Super cool. Really nice looking wheel on there. Not a bad looking car at all. And probably my favorite Mashbox that I've found this round would be the M3 wagon. These things, I, I definitely collect the M3 wagons. I love me some wagons. So, uh, let's just go ahead and bring this up here and pop her loose and put her where it belongs because this is definitely one that I collect for myself and plan to get around to doing a wheel swap on one of these 
when I find the right wheels, which I've not found yet. It's got the five spoke wheels that they've used on quite a few of the Dodge Chargers and the Hellcats. Uh, it's used on the Holden car as well, which is honestly it's probably been one more one of my mine. Yeah, one of my more favorite stock classic wheels from Matchbox. Oof, I don't know why that was so hard to spit out. But as you can see, I've also got the black one and the white one. And now, ta-da! Let's stick in the gray one. Next black with white, and you got gray. Yeah. It's not always black and white, people. You gotta remember the gray area. A lot of people don't remember the gray area. And that's where they get their hearts broke. Because they just think black and white. And it's not just black and white. Unfortunately. Sometimes we wish things would just be so simple. And sticking with the uh, Bel Airs. We've got another one. This time from the Adventure Force. Which I never really paid too much attention to before. Because, like, quite frankly... The wheels are just garbage. Uh, not the best detail. No see-through glass, plastic, whatever you want to call it. There's not even a multi-piece there. It's all metal. Minus the uh, base and the bumper. But these things are made by Walmart. I didn't realize that before. So it's kind of neat. It's cheap. But, I mean, when you want to pay cheap, it's what you get. And then the wife also picked out this one. This is called Leadfoot. Kind of reminds me of a 49 Mercury. Which is another one of my favorite cars and speaking of I've got it over here I just have to grab it you got the 49 Mercury custom and this thing is just beautiful just really sharp looking little car. Good old lead sled. Again, Coke release. Could be much better without the Coke. That's all right. And then another one, here's one that's just super fun and really cool. Uh, it is the Bazooka Joe transport set. Uh, it's got the 1958 C600. Really neat looking truck color combination. Just got some old school, old school paint color combos. Big bold colors. Wheels completely painted one color, matching something else. You got the whole Bazooka Joe and gang with walkie talkie text Jane, Pesty, Pat, Tuffy, and Mort. But the coolest part about this is the 49 Mercury that is in the back. <coughs> And let me tell you, this thing was kind of a pain to get out because you got to undo the trailer from the base. And then you got to undo the car from inside the trailer. And, well, for life of me, I just cannot get this thing to go back inside and screw down inside the trailer. 
So, I said, forget it. I'll just wrap it up and stick it to the side. And when I can find another 49 Mercury base, it'll go on it. So now, it stays hidden and protected because honestly, this is probably my most favorite piece that was found. I'm not taking the hauler off. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And then, kind of sticking with the haulers, I was given this one, which has got the 73 Chevy truck and a 1959 Corvette. XP86. Not really the most attractive of uh, Corvettes at all. It looks like a hideous cross up between a Stingray and a like a 50s. Like, not 59, but like the ones that kind of look like uh, Porsches. Where they had the, the headlights like right here and formed into the fender. Kind of like an old Porsche. Old, old Porsche. And then you got the 72, right? 73 Chevy truck. Just Chevy truck. Ramp truck. It's got some ramps that come with it, but they're a pain. They don't really stick out or work like they're supposed to. So. Factory engine, nothing special. Could pop it out and find a, a Corvette motor for it. Because yeah. that power probably, you know, it is adequate to haul. You don't expect there to get there the fastest. You're just gonna, gonna get there when you get there. But I mean, it don't have to be a race to get to wherever. You can just kind of go with the flow, you know? Just go with the flow. Go with the flow. The next, got a bedless Chevy. Man, I really enjoy these bedless Chevys. This is super cool. I almost wonder if uh be able to take that Stuff apart. I'm saying it's only the first one I've actually removed from package and opened up. But I could swap out a base maybe with one of the Dodge trucks. I don't know. If you know and I don't, leave a comment. Let me know. But this thing ain't no Hellcat. But it is still supercharged. It is supercharged. Woo woo. Hell yeah, brother. Yep. Cool beans. Would have been better if I could uh, get the coat stuff off without getting the rest of the paint off because honestly, I haven't had any luck getting the livery or the decals off these M2s. I tried with the uh, Super B and it just did not come off the way it should have. And I got the couple five packs here. Got the Mopar and the Flames. The Mopar for me is just really cool because obviously I like Mopar. But this Dodge Daytona in red, super clean piece. I'll wind up pulling it out. I'll, you know, maybe I'll take the one off, leave the rest, and change the wheels. Uh, this one, I'm going to completely strip it down to white, change the wheels, because that, that's just a clean one, super clean. Maybe I'll paint the hood black, I don't know. But the thing is, it's funny that I've noticed <coughs> is. I have not found a difference from the one that they made. This is what it's supposed to be. 
It doesn't say what year. But I'm going to assume that this one was from like 2014. Maybe sooner. And you see it was... I can't get it. But there you go. Dodge Challenger Concept. And over the years, I have not seen the casting really change. Except for when they do the drift or like the Hellcat Demon style. Even the SRT is the same. No wide fender. And yeah, so that, that's kind of a little lazy of them on that, but that's all right. They don't have to constantly change it. They'll just be like, they just have to constantly change this and this. That'd be a, a waste. For sure. That one's pretty cool. Uh, the pipes definitely look a little funny. Compared to what they normally do. And I thought I had one on the wall to look at. But I guess I don't. You got Hemi Cuda. Cuda. Could have, should have had it. Oh well. You got the Viper. What kind of Viper? GTSR. So there's the uh, ones that were in it. You got the Dodge Challenger SRT 8, 2008. 1970 Dodge, Chemi Dodge Hemi Challenger. Whew. For some reason, that was a mouthful. Dodge Viper GTSR. 78 Little Red Express. And the 69 Charger Daytona. Which. That is just some super cool artwork. That'll wind up getting pulled out and maybe make a little diamond piece just out of that. This one on the Flame series, I was really excited because it's got the 64 Impala. These two, they're okay. They're all right. That's Cosmo and Wanda. They're just kind of, and they're doing their thing, you know? Uh, I'll give them that. Then we got the Ford delivery, that thing with what looks like, you know, giant white walls. It's super cool. Super cool. Engine Builders, El Segundo County. That's cool. And then, of course, the ever so overrated Square Body Silverado. Y'all, everybody goes nuts for these stupid Silverados. But I can't believe I do too. But, again, I'm not that dude that pays $40 for a $10 toy car. Maybe if it was a Chase. But, even then, I have a hard time doing something like that. And one last thing for the end of the show basically is we got the what is this the, the Kroger mail-in the Porsche 356 Outlaw and if I ain't said it before I say it again I sure dig me some red vehicles Just can't understand that hillbilly red jack nonsense <laughs> uh do like a red vehicle. Those four spoke really are on point with this one. Um, I am seeing the other mail ins on eBay. And yeah, I guess I could, you know, say the hassle on the Walmart one or like Target one <clears throat> and just. I don't know. Buy it on eBay. That's for if you don't have the store next close to you. And really, you're only paying about maybe five, ten dollars more than what you would have just doing it. So, you know, depend on what it's worth for you. It might actually just be cheaper to get it online 
if you happen to have a store that's a bit away from you. And again, here we have some other photos and illustrations of the car. This is number two in the lineup of the mail ins. So that's really cool. Next one, I believe, is the wide body Chevelle. And then after that, there is an Alfa Romeo. That is the one that I'm really looking forward to next. Like, I think I'm going to go ahead and get the Walmart Samick one once um, the period comes in time. The mail-in portion of, the, of it comes in. And then I'll go ahead and actually participate in the mail-in. But for me, out of this set, obviously, my chase piece, that. And then we have the GR Corolla. The Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL. The Mercedes CLK and Fleet Street combo. And then we have a Johnny Lightning G20 van. And on and probably have to be the Bazooka Joe 49 Mercury were probably my favorite out of all of these so uh you know as usual hit the like button comment which one was your favorite and now i bid you adieu please stick around i am going to continue this video with some cars on the turntable so thanks for watching peace